Hi guys and welcome to Lizzie Dean Makes. I'm Lizzie Dean and this is the channel where we make, mend and grow our way to a big life on a small budget. Hi guys, welcome to Lizzie Dean Makes. I'm Lizzie Dean and today I'm going to be baking bread. So the recipe that I'm going to be following is um, an easy bake bread recipe from the BBC uh, recipe site. So I'll put a link to that in the description below. Um, so the ingredients you need are 500 grams of strong white flour. I'm actually using self-raising flour because it is what I have got in the cupboard. Um, so <laughs> it's already got um, raising agent in it, but I'm going to be adding uh, yeast to it anyway. And I've got some uh, pink Himalayan salt and some table salt for the salt that I'm going to add. I've got some uh, Easy Bake Allison yeast, which I've put in the cupboard from, um, I think Morrison's I picked that up from, but you can get it in any supermarket. And then I've got um, some olive oil as well, which helps to stop it from forming a hard crust while it's rising um, and gives it um, a much softer, richer flavour, um, not flavour, consistency, uh, fluffiness, when it's cooking as well, it helps it to stay elastic. Um, which is something that happens after you've kneaded it. So you really need to do the kneading, which is what we're sort of going to be doing in this video. Uh, and then we've also got 300 uh, millilitres of water. So I have um, put some 300 millilitres of water in a jar as well, because I'm going to do two lots um, of dough today. Um, and I'm going to bake rolls with them and then I'm going to freeze them. So that's the plan. Um, so I'm just going to uh, get started and measure out my ingredients first and then I will uh, put the camera onto a time lapse while I do the kneading because it will take a long time, probably about 20 minutes of kneading for each ball of dough. So I don't really want to sit there for 40 minutes of me doing the same thing. So I have got a um, Salter electronic scale. My uncle who um, taught me how to make bread a couple of years ago uh, had a similar sort of electronic scale and it's really good because you can put your bowl on and you can pour all your ingredients straight into the bowl um, and it measures as you go so that's really good so I'm going to stick my bowl on and I'm going to stick it on and zero it so that's at zero so then I'm going to add 500 grams of flour I'm not going to sift this I never sift flour but um, I think some people do Okay, and then I am going to add the salt. So the recipe calls for two teaspoons of salt, but I'm just going to um, eyeball it rather than measure it with salt. So I'm going to need some pink Himalayan salt. And as that's worked well, I'm not going to bother with the table salt at all. And I'm then going to add the last of the dry ingredients, which is seven grams of yeast. So I'm currently at uh, 513 slash 14. It keeps alternating grams because I went slightly over with my flour. So I'm going to bring this up to about 520. There we go, with my yeast. So that's all the dry ingredients first. And then I'm just going to mix them together. And then you create a little, um, they call it a well, but basically a hole in the middle where you scrape the flour out of the way. And that's where you're going to put your wet ingredients in. So I am going to add my 300 millilitres of water. I'm going to add it all in. Some people will add it a bit at a time and keep going, but not me. <laughs> and then I'm going to add... Uh, three tablespoons of olive oil. Okay, 
Okay, so then I am going to take this off the scales. So I'm done with those for now. Catch the last of my flower dustings for now. And I'm going to start mixing this. So I can't actually take off my wedding and engagement rings because my fingers got too fat. So I'm going to have to keep those on while I'm working. But I think ideally when you're working with dough you would take it off because it gets very sticky and very messy. And you probably don't want your rings clogged up with that. So um, if you can take them off, probably best to do that. I'm just going to have to scrub them later. So then I start to fold my dry ingredients over the top of my wet ones just with my fingers and the water will start to escape the edges of the well Okay, so it's getting very sticky now. I'm keeping one hand, which is the hand of my rings on, clean for now while it's in its worst bit. And I'm just starting to form this into a dough in the bowl with just one hand, picking up all of the dry flour and crumbs from the bottom of the bowl as I go. Just starting to um, turn the edges over. everything off the su surface and sides of the bowl. Okay, so if I show you now, the bowl is pretty much clean and I've got a ball of still sticky and still um, clacky dough here. So this is at the point that I will start kneading. So I'm going to grab some flour, dust my um, tabletop here and I will start kneading. So I'm going to put the camera on time lapse for this and just get stuck in. Okay guys, so um, this ball of dough is nearly done, so I just thought I would show you what sort of um, consistency you want it to be like when you have finished kneading it for the first time. So if you can see, I can fold this and knead it, and it's really smooth and elastic -y now. It's not sticking to me, it's not sticking to the table. It's um, it's just really elastic -y, really uh, smooth and uh, not lumpy or um, sticky. It's very, very elastic and that's the um, point with kneading is that you are working the elasticity of the um, fibres of the dough so that it can expand and grow air pockets and become light and fluffy. So, the better you knead it and the more elastic the consistency of your dough, the lighter and fluffier it should be in the end. And uh, as you can see, I should not have left <laughs> things on the table, especially my coffee that was over here while I was kneading. <laughs> but uh, trying to video and do something at the same time I clearly wasn't thinking straight so anyway this is where the dough should be at this point 
nice and stretchy and elastic and smooth. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to form it into a ball by tucking it under like this. And I'm going to roll it around a bit more. And I'm going to tuck again, make sure that it is nice and smooth surface on the top without any big cracks or anything because you don't want it to form a hard skin while it is rising. So then I bring my bowl back, I pop my dough down in there and then I get a bit of olive oil and I coat the whole of the outside of my ball of dough. This is again so that it won't um, dry out and uh, form a crust while it's proofing, while it's rising. So that is where we're going to leave that. I'm going to make a second batch in my other bowl and prep them and these will then stay and they will rise in the tub for an hour. So these bowls that I'm using are from IKEA and they come with little lids that you can put on. Now that should double in size but that shouldn't actually hit this lid for now so I'm going to pop the lid on to stop dust or dog hair or <laughs> insects whatever you know might go on it and make it manky while it's rising so I'm going to leave it to rise oh I'll just pop this um, little thing slightly to the side so that the air can get in because obviously that needs to react with the yeast to um, cause it to rise so I'm just going to leave that like that and I'm going to get started on my second batch of dough Hi guys, so the um, dough is now in the kitchen. I have put it um, propped up against the radiator uh, in the kitchen where it's nice and warm. So we have actually got the heating on in here today uh, for the first time this year, this uh, autumn. Um, so it's really toasty. So once I have finished uh, with the bread rising 
Uh, so I'm going to make it rise three times. Um, so I'm going to let it rise now, then I'm going to knock it back, um, let it rise again, then I'll knock it back and make it into the roll shapes, and then I'll leave it to rise for a third time before I actually bake it to make sure it's nice and light and fluffy. Now, I don't think it suggests this in the um, BBC recipe that um, I'm using, but it's the method that I'm going to do. It's the method that my Uncle John taught me, and so that's what we're doing. <laughs> He, uh, he would never use the uh, cheap A flour that I use, but uh, needs must. So um, basically today is a end of the month, no money to go grocery shopping, no particular things left. So we've got no cheese left, we've got no bread left, um, we've got no yogurt left, <laughs> uh, we've got a little bit of granola left, some milk, um, not a lot of things but we have got our store cupboards worth of stuff so today i am making lots of bread rolls uh, tonight i will be making uh, a vegetable paella and then uh, tomorrow night we will probably have a uh, jambalaya or a gumbo something like that and things that i can do with the frozen veg that i've got and with the uh, tins that i've got uh, I'm also going to be making today some uh, chocolate chia seed pudding. So I've got lots of chia seed in the cupboard. I've got coconut milk and I've got lots of dark chocolate and cocoa powder. We haven't actually got any um, snacky things or luxury items left this month. We've eaten them all, <laughs> including all of my birthday present uh, chocolates and things that people have given me. We do have some boiled sweets, but that's about it in terms of luxury items left. So. I am today doing just bulk stuff to um, sort of fill up the grocery shop that we would probably need to do at this time in the month. Um, you know, top up of cheese, milk, bread, um, and uh, any luxury snacks that we really feel like we need to have in our lives <laughs> um, with things that I'm going to make from stuff we already have in the cupboard. So that's what today is all about. So um, I'm gonna leave an hour now for the dough that I have made to rise, then I'll knock them both back, leave them to rise again for another hour, then I'll uh, knock them back, make them into um, roll shapes, leave them to rise for probably only half an hour then, and then I will bake them. So um, all in, this will go on sort of all afternoon. I'm not going to film all of it. <laughs> Um, and I don't actually have to be doing stuff for most of it so that's the the long bit is out of the way now and that probably took me about 40 minutes to make um, well two um, batches of rolls so that's it's not that bad really and now that they are rising the knocking back won't take long and um, you know there's not a lot of L other hard work to do it's just sitting around waiting which I can do playing on my phone quite happily <laughs> um, I uh, am listening to shut up and dance for panto on repeat very loud on the mini rig on the computer at the moment so uh, I'll probably be dancing around in my nice new birthday dungarees thanks dad uh, to that for the next 40 minutes 45 minutes until the uh, loaves uh, worth of dough are ready to be knocked back and um, I'll just chill out for the rest of the day. So that's basically what's going on. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, bread making video. I will bring you back uh, later on but for now I'm going to say goodbye. Bye! Hi guys, welcome back. So these have been uh, risen for an hour, then knocked back, then allowed to rise for a, another hour. So as you can see, they are much, much bigger now than they were when we left them to rise. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to knock them back for the third, uh, for the second time and leave them to rise for the third time. But um, this time I'll leave them to rise in individual rolls on the baking trays ready to go in the oven. So I'm going to preheat the oven. Um, and uh, let it heat up while these are rising for the final time. So I've also brought a knife along because I'm going to slit the top of each of the rolls um, in a nice pattern which also 
helps to stop it from bursting as it um, bakes when it will rise even more than it has during the um, amazing process. So, a bit of flour, dust my work surface out, and then I will pour out my raised dough. I'm going to knock it back. And it's super elastic and stretchy now. It's just really, really cool consistency, as you can see. So, knock that back. They go golden on top, you know they're ready and when you take them off, if you knock underneath and they sound hollow, then you know that they've finished cooking and if you look at the bread here, you can see how light and fluffy it is, it just smells amazing, so I'm going to eat some now. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I will link the recipe for these bread rolls um, in the description box below. Um, if you like the video, then please give us a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more MacMend and Grow videos, uh, frugal living tips, then please do subscribe, hit the subscribe button. And if you'd like to be notified about all videos, please make sure you press the little bell icon, which will send you a notification every time I upload a new video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.